I love crankbaits for bass, and everybody knows the Cotton Cordell Big O. Well, today on Retro Bassin, we're going to be fishing with a Big O that you don't know. Retro Bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures Coming off of Zepco 33 Out on the bass boat making beer cans float Doing some trespassing Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules Welcome to Retro Bassin Today on Retro Bassin we're going to be talking about one of my favorite kinds of fishing, and that is chunking and winding crankbaits for bass. As you can see next to me, I've got my Umco 3500 SS crankbait tackle box. And bass and buds, you all know this thing is packed to the gills with some old school cranking gold. Recently, I've been on a little bit of a tear with some miniature crankbaits. I'm not talking, you know, eighth ounce, quarter ounce finesse crankbaits, but I'm also not talking the big dogs either. I'm talking crankbaits in that three eighths of an ounce, diving from five to eight feet kind of range. This is historically a size of crankbait that I loved throwing for bass. I love the versatility. I love the sort of finessiness of it. I love the fact that you can go down the bank and really pick apart a shoreline super, super well with one of these baits. So one of the baits that I picked up recently was the Cotton Cordell Deep Big O. I will show you some of the uh, Vintage Bass Pro catalogs where I found this thing, and I think I first have it in my 1978 Master Catalog. This thing came in a number of different sizes, colors, profiles, and even names but all are roughly the same bait. So I took this bait out today on a lake that, even though it's close to me, I don't fish it a ton, and that is Lake Austin in downtown Austin. Generally speaking, if I'm up in that neck of the woods, I'm either over on Travis or on Decker or Bass Drop. So this is just, for whatever reason, not one of the lakes that I hit too often. I feel like I had a pretty good day on the water with the Cotton Cordell Deep Big O. We caught a few fish, I learned a few things, and overall, I'm really glad that I spent the day with this bait tied on my line. So Bass and Buds, what we'll do is I will uh, we'll zip on down to the lake. I will show you some of the footage from that little morning trip that I took today. And then when we get back in the studio, I want to bust out some of the new in the package, deep big O's that I've got. I want to show you some of the different varieties, colors, and stuff like that. And we're also going to deep dive into some of my old Bass Pro Shops Master Catalogs where I will show you the spreads they have on this really cool bait. I first saw this bait in the 1978 Bass Pro Catalog and I went through my different years and I see it in there in some iteration up till about 1985. What's interesting and you'll see when we get back here is that this bait has had a number of different iterations over the years. The design has changed, even the name has changed, but it's always been some sort of Cotton Cordell Deep Big O. So Bass and Buds, I will see you on the water. getting out a little bit later than I was hoping to today. I actually had pretty grand plans to go fish Lake Travis and <laughs> you know silly me I didn't realize there's a Bass Pro finale day going on so I, I pull into uh, Mansfield Dam Park just before sunup and <laughs> some $70,000 bass rigs start pulling in behind me and I went uh oh. I quickly figured out that was not the lake for me. So I hightailed it down to Lake Austin. Behind me you can see the Lake Austin 360 bridge. We are just gonna head up here a little bit and hopefully 
catch a fish or two on a couple of baits that I brought with. Okay, just saw a little bass. He uh, came up and kind of slurped at this thing and I just missed him, so that's a good sign. I've been seeing a ton of fish here today. I had a really hard time getting bit and all right, I just had two hits in a row. So we might be, I won't dare say onto something, but we're kind of figuring it out. Now I tied this on, this is a Cotton Cordell Deep Big O. It's actually a cute little tight crankbait. I had a couple hits on it so far. I did not manage to land them, but I think that's a good sign. So I'm gonna kind of keep trucking down this bank. As you can see, there's a few wake boats going by, so I'm doing a little bit of this today as well. There's one. Little guy. <laughs> you can see it hooked him on the outside of the mouth, so I think these guys are just sort of, actually hooked him in the eye, but I think these guys are just sort of swiping at it, which is what happens. So luckily I've got really good, uh, super sticky, sharp hooks. But first bass of the day, not a, not a lunker, but I'm glad to finally get one. These little guys have been jumping all around me, kind of driving me a little bit nuts. That was a fish. I think, it, is it still a fish? Yep, if it is, it's a little fish. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, I didn't know if that could get smaller than the first guy we got, but there we go. <laughs> ah! He's so small, I can't get my big thumb in his mouth. Man. All right. If you're gonna hook yourself, you don't wanna do it on like a quarter pounder, do you? There we go. So you would think this is like an XD with the size of this fish, but little guy, at least they're hitting. So I'm gonna keep chucking down this bank. Hopefully, I've heard that, at least on Travis, you're having to weed through a lot of little fish to get a big one. So I'm gonna keep throwing this deep big O. Hopefully we're gonna get into a little bigger fish. Either way, nice little fish on the Cotton Cordell big O. Awesome. It's funny, but early in my fishing career, crankbaits were definitely not one of my confidence baits. Maybe it's because the waters I fished were really shallow and just not really conducive to crankbaiting. But now, man, it's like right up there with a the spinnerbait for me. There's one. That might be a little better fish. Nap, nah, same size. <laughs> he just felt better. All right. <laughs> well, we're on a pattern. I don't know if it's a good pattern, but we're on a pattern anyway. <laughs> I love this crankbait so far. So this is the first time I've ever fished the Cotton Cordell Deep Big O, but I kind of like it. It's a subtle, tight, neat little crankbait. And another nice, eh, quarter pounder.
<laughs> if I'm lucky, I'm gonna have like a five fish bag of like two pounds today. Woo! <laughs> All right, there we go. Look at that. So I think I'm figuring out how to fish this bait. And by the way, you fish it nothing like the original Fred C. Young Big O at all. It's a much more subtle bait than that. There's, I think it was like the 1972 Bassmaster Classic, there's an angler talking about fishing the Big O, and he said it's a whole lot like throwing a pork chop. Honestly, this is like throwing a little pork rind. Totally different ball of wax. You know, it's kind of funny, of all the tools we talk about to locate fish, whether it is electronics, temperature gauges, pH meters, color selectors, <laughs> your eyes. The one we really don't talk about a lot, at least that I don't hear talked about a lot, is scent. And I'm not talking about the scent that you put on a lure, but rather the scent that you can pick up just hunting a lake. I don't know how often you guys have been driving down the lake and that smell hits you. The scent of predators feeding on bait fish. I can't tell you how often that I will, literally, I don't care what the electronics are saying, I don't care what my eyes are saying. If I smell action, I stop and I fish. That's what happened today. I'm fishing a lake, Lake Austin in Texas, that honestly, I don't fish a ton. So I'm kind of just driving down the lake and again, the smell hit me. So I stopped, I fished, and I caught. There's one. Oh, there's one. He hit right off a little stump that I cast to. Nice fish. A little bit nicer. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Come on, big O. Oh, let's get him in here. There we go. Woo! <laughs> he smoked it. Okay, so these fish are pouncing all over this at this point. So I think I've kind of got this technique dialed in. I am casting this thing. We're fishing anywhere from, I would say, five to eight feet of water, casting this deep big O up there. When it starts ticking the bottom, I don't know if it's weeds or a little bit of rocks down here, but that is where the fish are coming in. So it looks like an old pier that was there many years ago, and he was right by the third one that I cast to. Nice. Ah, the only thing that's kind of jacked me up a little bit today is I swapped out the hooks on this, and I went with a little bit of a bigger hook than perhaps is designed for the bait, and occasionally that front hook is catching the back hook. So I might need to do like the old original rattle trap deal where I put a smaller hook on the back, but but I ain't doing that now. <laughs> Ooh, there's some big fish busting right up here. Ooh, I'm thick in them. I'm gonna get bit here, I can tell you right now. We're gonna get bit here and it's gonna be a nice fish. There we go. There we go. Told you. Oh, that is a nicer fish. Ooh. Yeah, buddy. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That's actually like a largemouth. <laughs> Unlike those other things we were getting earlier. Yes, yes, yes. Come here, buddy. Come here. Come here. Oh. Ha ha. There we go. A little bit bigger bass on the big O. That worked out really well. Oh, let's see if I can get this guy unhooked without hooking myself. <laughs> All right, bass and buds. Well, we don't only catch dinks on here. <laughs> so there's a nice, solid Lake Austin bass on the Cotton Cordell Deep Big O. Man, I knew it was just a matter of time until I got a nicer class fish 
with this bait. I felt dialed in. I know we weren't getting a ton of bites. I wasn't getting huge bites, but it just felt right. And you know, sometimes you get out there, you get it dialed in. I ended up actually putting every other rod away today and fish with just this. So what we did is we found a little bit of a ledge. It's weird, there's a marina up here on my right and it's about two feet of water. Well, about 50 foot off of that is a little bit of a ledge that goes from five down into 10 feet. This is where this guy was busting and we got him on the bait. Let's let him go. Welcome back to the studio. We did not catch a ton of uh, big fish today, but I fished only a couple hours and I felt like I got on a pretty good little pattern, especially on a lake that, again, is not one of the lakes that I'm super comfortable fishing. So we will right now take a look at some of the different um, versions of this bait. We're also gonna deep dive into some of the Bass Pro Shops catalogs as well. But what are my initial thoughts of the Cotton Cordell Deep Big O? I gotta tell you, I liked this bait before I went fishing today, and I like it even more after. You know, sometimes with older baits, um, they're a little bit challenging to fish. You know, maybe they were designed to catch a 1970s fisherman as opposed to a fish. I thought it casted really well. It had a nice, neat little wobble, and it definitely attracted and caught bass. So here is the version of the Cotton Cordell Deep Big O that I was fishing, and this is more reminiscent of that 1978 version of that bait. And I've got a feeling um, these baits did come right around that era. Maybe these are 78 or 79, but either way, they're probably not even 80s baits. First things first, you'll see it's got a molded in lip as opposed to some of the later versions which had more of a, um, a lip that was attached. So it's got a more of a molded lip, like a lot of the crankbaits at the time. It almost has eh, sort of a bandit looking body, doesn't it? It's got a little bit of sort of imprinted scales on there that you can see. And that is the bait. I see that there's a single, um, eh, maybe there's two little knockers in there actually. And let's go ahead and listen to this thing, see what kind of thump it gives. I don't know if this is made of that old school butyrate or not, but it definitely has that old school low thump that bass fishermen still look for today. Okay, here is the first catalog in which I saw the Cotton Cordell Deep Big O, and it's my 1978 Bass Pro Shops master catalog. I'll go right to the spread here and show you so this is a honestly an awesome two-page spread dedicated to the Cotton Cordell Big O. And by the way, check those out. One, two, three, four sizes of the original bait. And then you've got this, the Deep Big O. And it came here in three different sizes. Now, looking at the different Big O's that I have, I'm pretty sure that this version, it's either this guy or this guy, um, looks pretty darn similar to the bait we were fishing with today. And I'll open this thing up real quick to show you. Get a good close-up look of this deep big O. So there is the bait itself, and it is a tight, good-looking little crankbait. You can see it's got some sort of natural molded-in scale pattern there. It's got a molded lip, and it's got two different um, sort of internal rattles. It's got a bigger one here and a smaller BB right in the back. And that is that bait. That's a really good looking little crankbait. And by the looks of it, I think that's probably this guy. It looks like that's the three inch, one third of an ounce crankbait. And that's an interesting size, is it? You don't see too many one third ounce crankbaits. So that is the bait itself. Now here's the rest of the spread in the different colors that it comes in. I've got a lot more colors than this, so I don't know if I had like a later year, but it comes in, looks like eight different colors. Some of these are pretty standard for big O's, like this one, the old Smokey Joe. Some of them, I haven't seen a ton, like this candy apple crawfish. That's pretty cool looking. So back to this 1978 version, and this is honestly the one that I fish with today. Here's the package it came in, and here is a little insert. It says, uh, the deep big O, searching for the bottom. After years of studying deep rain lures, finally we have discovered how to make one go down and how to make one dig and wiggle as it searches for the bottom. And boy, it really did that today. 
Uh, we believe this is the deepest wiggling tight action lure ever offered to you, the fisherman. Uh, by following the fine-tuning instructions packaged in each box, the lure has reached 15-foot depths. You can reach the desired depth by simply varying the line used. We have found in experiments that the lure will go twice as deep with 6-pound test as it will with 20-pound test. We strive to build better lures, and you, uh, we strive to build better lures for you, and any comments, both pro and con, are always considered and welcomed. Write to us. We'll put you on our mailing list and try to keep you advised of our plans for the future. And thanks for buying Cotton Cordell, Cotton Cordell, from the Cotton Cordell uh, Incorporated Hot Springs, Arkansas. Okay, so right here, this says this thing is a quarter ounce. So I guess I stand corrected. I guess the bait that I'm fishing with was actually the smaller version of the Deep Big O. But either way, that's pretty cool. And that is the bait um, that started out in 1978. Now we'll take a look at the next catalog and see honestly how dramatically it changed. Okay, so the next catalog where I found a Deep Big O spread was this. My 1984 master catalog, again from Bass Pro Shops. So this one we got downsized to a one page spread on the Big O, but it says it's still hotter than ever. So it looks like we've got, uh, well now we're down to, it looks like three sizes of the classic Big O. So we're starting to get a smaller lineup of the bait already. And it looks like I see just one version of this, the Super C Deep Diver. I don't have any of these, this Super C Deep Diver new in the package, but at a recent flea market, I came across a tackle box and in it was this thing. It's an unlabeled crankbait. It doesn't say Cotton Cordell on it. I've got a, in the process of replacing the hooks. But to me, that looks a whole lot like that Super C Deep Diver. So either this is going to be um, that, or maybe this could be some other brand, but it looks pretty darn similar to that. But either way, what's interesting is that immediately, it looks like the, the shape of the lure changed from 1978 to 1984, and the name changed as well. So I don't know what the story with that is, but, but that is the 1984 version. Now we're going to go to 1985 and see yet another change in the Deep Big O. Just one year later, in 1985, we get yet another change to the Deep Big O. So, you can sort of start to see a trend here. We went from a two-page spread in 78 to a one-page spread in 85, and now we're down to just a half-page spread for this once great lure. It's still hotter than ever, but with a much less real estate. So, it looks like we've got three sizes of that original shallow diving Big O, and now the deep big O is gone, that super C is gone, and in its place is this, the extra deep big O. Actual size is two inches, just like the last version, and it's a third of an ounce. But you can see that it's a dramatically, dramatically different looking bait. I do have this one in a new in the package, and here it is. This is the Cotton Cordell Extra Deep Series. What's interesting is on this package, nowhere does it actually say Big O. And even on the back, it just says extra deep without a reference to the Big O itself. I don't know why that is. I have opened up one of these that I plan to use on a future trip. And here it is. So, yes, the body profile is similar-ish to the one that we're fishing with today. But the lip itself is not molded in. It's actually a screwed-in lip. And I'm sure there's probably a little bit of glue in there as well. And now, look at that. Look at that BB toward the distal tip. That is interesting. That is very reminiscent of a Rebel Deep We Are. And I guess the whole point of that is to make that lip go down more and make this thing go deep. So I bet this is actually probably a deeper diver than the Big O that I started with today. So the last thing I'll do before I leave is I will show you a side-by-side -side of what, I know that three of these are definitely Big O's. This guy I'm highly suspicious is a Big O. But you can see there's definitely some similarities from version to version, but there's also some rather dramatic differences. And honestly, I don't know the reason for that. This one has that molded sort of scale pattern. This one has actually a much more rounded head. There's that Super C, and then there's the Extra Deep. So there are four, though. 
I don't care how you cut it though, I would fish with any one of these baits. By the way guys, if you have not checked out the new Retro Bass and line of hats and shirts from Texas Provisions, I will drop a link to that down below, but be sure to go check out txprovisions.com. We've got, I think, like six new hat designs. We have actually almost sold out of most of the sizes, so we've got a few shirts left. We definitely have some hats left, so head on there, check it out, and by the way, if you do order something, hit me up on Instagram. I'll make sure to throw in a sticker for you as well. I'm also going to drop a link to Bass Fishing Archives. It is really the one-stop shop for online bass fishing history, and they've got a great article about the Fred C. Young Cotton Cordell. So I will drop a link to that down below. Until next time, Bass and Buds, keep on cranking, and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bass Soon.